Dear Grade 12 students, welcome to today's English lesson. This is Reading 4A Part 2. Let's get started. There are three objectives to consider for today's lesson. The first one has to do with constructing a personal response to three questions. The second one has to do with predicting the meaning of unfamiliar words. And finally, we are relating information in four texts. Let's start today's lesson by recalling what we have learned from yesterday's lesson. Please open your books on page 52 now. Well, as you remember, we have four different types of texts on page 52. What is the type of text A? It is, yes, it is a letter. What about text B? Excellent, it is a flyer. Text C is an article. And finally, text D is, yes, it is an email. Now, I'm to tell you about some features and you're supposed to match the feature to the appropriate text. So, which text gives facts about a certain topic? What do you think? Excellent! It is text C, the article. Articles give factual information about different topics. Which of the texts advertises for something? Do you know? Yes, it is the flyer. Flyers advertise for products and services. Which of the texts has details of a journey? Yes, it is the letter, the itinerary. And which of the four texts is written to a friend. Super! It is the email, the informal email text D. Which of the four texts uses informal language? Again, yes, it is text D, the email. It is written to a friend and so we use informal language. We have two texts that are written using formal language. Which ones? Do you know? Yes. The article is written using formal language and the itinerary is written using formal language. Which of the texts has bullet points? This is the flyer. We have the details written in bullet points. Which of the four texts is written as a response to an earlier message or an earlier email? This is text A, the itinerary. It is written as a response because by the beginning of the letter we have as requested. So this means that Miss Bennett has sent an email or a letter requesting information about the details of her journey. Which of the texts is written using first person? This is text D. We have I, my, so this makes text G written in first person. And which of the texts has a title? Excellent. Text C has a title, the article has a title, and the flyer as well has a title. Moving on to exercise D on page 53, there are four comprehension questions. You're supposed to answer the questions and support your answer with evidence from the texts. Pause the video now to answer 
the first question. Well, question one is asking you to identify two texts that include practical advice for tourists visiting Italy. So, which two texts include that kind of advice? Well, the texts are A and B. Excellent. What evidence can you use from the texts to support your answer? Excellent. In the last paragraph of text A, there is a piece of advice to Miss Bennett, and the advice is asking Miss Bennett to make sure she is on time, otherwise, it would be difficult to find her new tickets. What about text B? Okay, in text B, there is advice on the cities to be visited in Italy and the sites that are worth visiting and finally we have information about the services the company offers we are still working on exercise D this is question 2 I want you to read texts C and D and relate information from both texts to answer this question. Pause the video to answer. Well, from text D we know that Kelly has sent Zoe an article about Aqua Alta. And Zoe promised to take some photos of the barrier after her canal, right? From text C, which is the article, and maybe this is the article mentioned in text D, the article that Kelly sent Zoe. The article describes the problem Venice is facing with rising sea levels so if we analyze information from both texts we can learn that Kelly's project is maybe about Venice in general or how Venice is dealing with rising sea levels moving on to question 3 and the question is asking you to identify the different in writing styles between text A and D. And by that I mean which of the two texts is formal and which is informal. And after deciding on that, I want you to identify some of the features that support the text being formal or informal. Pause the video to answer the question. Well, let's consider text A and it is a formal letter. What features of formal language can you identify in text A? Wonderful. It begins and ends formally. We have Dear Miss Bennett and Yours Truly. These are used in formal letters only. So, these can't be used in informal letters. What else? What other feature can you think of? Okay. Text A uses formal and impersonal words. An example of formal words is ensure. And an example of impersonal expressions is as requested. And by impersonal, I mean we don't have you. So it doesn't go like as you requested. It goes like as requested. 
so this is a formal feature we use when writing formal letters or emails and finally the formal letter text a doesn't use any of the informal features we don't have short forms we don't have abbreviations we don't have exclamations we are still working on question 3 but we're considering text D now text D is yes it is an informal email what makes you decide that it is an informal email what features are there okay the subject line of the email is an exclamation and using exclamations is a feature of informal language so we've got loving venice as the subject line of the email the email itself begins and ends informally we have hey kelly and see you soon these are used only when writing informally there is informal language throughout the email we have short forms we have informal words and expressions and we've got exclamations and all these are features of informal writing moving on to question four and it goes like both texts b and c encourage tourists to visit italy how can you tell that text b is a leaflet why do you think text b is a leaflet what are the special features of a leaflet that are there in text b and why do you think text c is an article what features are there in text c that make it an article pause the video to answer well text b is a leaflet because can you tell me okay it is a leaflet because of the layout we have the company's logo we have photos and the way information is arranged prove that it is a leaflet we've got bullet points we've got catchy phrases written around one more thing is the use of promotional language we've got verbs of action like book visit and so on moving on to text c and it is an article because can you answer that wonderful it is an article because of the layout again there is a title there is a short introductory paragraph and we've got continuous text going in paragraphs one more thing is the content of text to see the content provides facts about a problem and an attempt to solve this problem and this content is best presented in an article moving on to exercise e i want you to match each word to its definition please pause the video to answer well what is an itinerary do you know well an itinerary is a detailed plan of a journey what does the word picturesque mean excellent picturesque is pretty especially in an old-fashioned way what about the word deteriorate what does it mean 
wonderful. It means to become worse. Uninhabitable means, yes, uninhabitable means impossible or unsuitable to live in. Severity, seriousness, and finally, stunning is best matched to very attractive and impressive. Now, I want you to read text to see one more time and decide which of the statements is true, which is false, and which is not mentioned. Please pause the video and answer. Well, the first statement goes like, Nowadays, Venice is flooded in winter only. So, what do you think? This statement is, yes, it is false. Why? Because in lines 7 to 9 we have, Floods occur in warmer months too. So, warmer months means not only in winter. Moving on, the sea water level worldwide will increase by more than half a meter by the end of the 21st century. This statement is excellent. It is true. Can you support this answer with evidence from the text? Excellent. Lines 11 and 12 go like global sea levels global sea levels is like sea water level worldwide so global sea levels will have risen up to 60 centimeters 60 centimeters has the same meaning as more than half a meter and again this makes this statement true. Venetians are worried about the future of their city. We don't know anything about this piece of information. It is not stated in the text. And this makes it not mentioned. Now I want you to read text B and answer the questions. Please pause the video now. Well, Zoe's trip to Italy lasts for six days only. Can you answer that? Wonderful. This statement is false, but why? By the beginning of her email, Zoe writes, Day 6 of my Italy trip. And by the end, we learn that she is still going on a canal trip the following day. And this means she is staying for more than 6 days. Both Zoe and Kelly see eye to eye, agree on how beautiful Venice is, this statement is true. Zoe is older than Kelly. This is never mentioned. We don't have any evidence to support this statement or either to prove it wrong. So this piece of information is not mentioned in the text. Moving on to exercise F, I want you to read the question and answer. Please pause the video now. Well, the question is asking you if you've ever been to Italy. And if you have, what cities did you visit? And if not, would you like to be there one day or not? Okay, for me, I have never visited Italy before, but I would really love to visit Italy. 
I would like to go to Florence because I know that it is a very artistic and beautiful city. This is the end of today's English lesson. Thanks for watching and remember, this video will always be available on Microsoft Teams for you to watch at any time.